Welcome back to week four and video three where we are going to be discussing the different types of plate boundaries that exist around the world. So those, uh, there's three major types and those include convergent, divergent, and transform boundaries. So we'll kind of move in order here. Convergent plate boundaries is where we have two plates colliding, coming together, and those two plates can be ocean and ocean plates or ocean and continent plates, or continent and continent plates colliding into one another. In uh, the uh, scenario where we have oceanic crust colliding, we end up with subduction. And what happens there is we have the oceanic plates heavier, it's denser, and it sinks and it's forced down uh, below that lighter crust, and it gets destroyed. Divergent plate boundaries, plates move away from each other. This is where we have oceanic crust created. Uh, like we talked about with the magnetic reversals and polarity of the ocean crust. And then at transform plate boundaries, the plates slide horizontally past one another. And here's just the diagram where we can see all the different plate boundaries in um, a hypothetical uh, diagram here. So we see transform, you can see that motion up here, the plates are moving horizontally past each other. We don't have creation or uh, destruction of crust. We get lots of earthquakes, but we don't see volcanoes. Um, we don't see new crust being created. At divergent plate boundaries, like you can see here, where we have active divergence, seafloor spreading. We create that oceanic ridge at a high point on the ocean floor because the rocks are very hot at that location. As they're pulled apart from one another, they start to cool and they get denser and they sink a little bit um, in the asthenosphere. And again, we get older as we move further away from that spreading center. It's a divergent plate boundary. Those can also occur on the continental crust as well, like you can see over here. And the same thing happens there. Divergence pulls, the plates get pulled apart. We have um, the asthenos here below is under less pressure. It's uh, called decompression melting. So we end up with molten rock rising to the surface because it's a lower density and creates volcanoes. And eventually, places uh, like over here on this continent, if that spreading continues, we'll create new oceanic crusts, and we can create an ocean basin that will eventually uh, get bigger and bigger and bigger. We can also have convergent plate boundaries. So here's that picture of the two plates colliding with one another. Here's an example of the subduction that occurs. The heavier, denser plate sinks below the light, uh, lower density plate as it is forced into the uh, and in the asthenosphere, any water that's present in that subducting plate gets forced out and actually helps to melt the surrounding asthenosphere. That magma that's produced, lower density, rises to the surface and eventually erupts as volcanoes. And that's why we have volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest. We can have ocean-ocean plates colliding, same process. Denser plate sinks below the less dense plate and creates volcanoes. Usually those volcanoes are in what's called an island arc, so we see them in a line. We can also have two plates colliding that are both continental. I don't have a picture of it on here. But in that case, we don't have subduction. The plates collide and we get super huge mountains and then we get a, a big root that develops underneath uh, building into the asthenosphere, similar to what you see here, only on a much larger scale. The Himalayan mountains are a good example of where that's happening today. So to give you a closer look at what is exactly happening at each of these, I have these three different videos that I got from um, the IRIS website. Here, the Incorporated Research Institutions for Seismology, they have links to these different videos. The first one that I'll show you is what's happening in a divergent plate boundary. So what happens here, we have hot mantle rock rising, um, we have melts, building up underneath that oceanic crust, and um, magma rises, creates new crust, they're pulled apart um, at that mid-ocean ridge. Over time, um, we pull those, those chunks apart and we end up moving that crust away, and it gets older and older as we move away from the center. Um, and you can see those kind of maroon splotches are um, eruptions of magma on the surface moving away from the center. 
over time. And yes, we get earthquakes at this as well as volcanoes. And so along these boundaries, sometimes we can have a series of underwater volcanoes that form and we can get a line of them on the ocean floor, those seamounts and goets that are produced at these boundaries. So this is also shows you the approximate rate, about 3 to 10 centimeters a year. Pretty slow. Same rate that your fingernails grow. So we also have convergent plate boundaries. So we have one plate subducting below the other. Uh, we end up with a zone where the, there's so much friction that the plates get stuck together. Once um, that pressure gets released, we end up creating mega huge earthquakes. The Cascadia subduction zone is due for one of these. This is also what happened in Japan to produce the a huge earthquake and tsunami that was produced there as well. And also right at the very edge we get this buildup of material uh, called an accretionary wedge as things get kind of scraped off of that subducting plate below. And the last type is uh, transform plate boundary, similar motion as what we see at strike slip faults. So we have horizontal motion and we get a fault plane that develops. Very quick video there. Um, but um, if we kind of go back here, we can see how these have shifted in the horizontal direction. And here we get lots of earthquakes, not any volcanoes, however. So I'll provide you with these links as well um, so you can play around with those, listen to the narration on your own. So these are the three types, divergent, pull apart, convergent, come together, transform, horizontally past one another. So those are the three major types of plate boundaries. We'll come back in the next video and talk about some of the features associated with these different boundaries.